Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stan Lee did. I apologize for the inconvenience the past two days. The previous video I tried to make of this, Turns out the microphone was on mute inadvertently, so I have to do this one just to replace it, you know? And also, turns out, I have 11 views from the United Kingdom, meaning that people across the entire Atlantic Ocean is able to see my work and such. And that should count as a record if you think about it. For this particular footage, I'll introduce one hero, one anti-hero, and one creature. So if you guys bear with me, I'll try to make this work on your guys' behalf, so bear with me. I'll introduce each of them to you. Here's the first one. Madam Doe. Real name? Dr. Trishy Smart. Height? 9 feet, including body. Weight? 293 pounds, excluding body. Status Hero in Cosmic Genius. Base, New York City, Mobile. Intelligence, 5 brains and 5 pluses. Behavior, Intellectual and Flirtatious. She enjoys her destined intellect. Lethality, Extremely lethal, but only when angered or during a fight. Weaknesses, If she concentrates too much. She'd get a seizure. Powers. She has the same powers as Neuron, but without the platform. Eyes bright blue, hair brownish black, and short. Origin. Dr. Trishy Smart was an everyday neuroscientist who had a fascination with the IQ of the villainous Neuron. Soon, Trishy placed herself in the same experiment as Neuron, and after the transformation, she also used the machine to make her head more lightweight. Renaming herself as Madame Dome, she went out and helped the similar genius, Dr. Brain, with a fight against both Neuron and the Globian Pump. After winning the fight, Madame Dome was marked as a cherished hero and is recently trying to find the perfect lover for herself. Costume. She simply wears nothing official, nothing in particular. Teams, Solitary, with Dr. Brain, and other heroes. Original Inspiration, Neuron. The next character I'll introduce is an anti-hero, and I hope you guys are having some fascination with this so far. And here it is. Natura. Real name, Dr. Karen Majors. Height, 6 feet 2 inches. Weight, 182 pounds. Status, anti-hero, and lover of flora. Base, New York City, mobile. Intelligence, four brains. Behavior, extremely flirtatious. She has a strong passion for plants and blood. Lethality, she's completely unpredictable. Though not really a vampire, she doesn't mind her unquenchable thirst for blood. Weaknesses, lack of sunlight, fire, and blades. Powers. She has full control over all plant life. She can alter parts of herself into any plant she chooses. For example, sprouting vines, turning her arms into Venus flytraps, shooting toxic barbs, and others. She radiates with pheromones, has advanced martial arts skills, and forms a unique tongue used to drain her targets of their blood. She could also turn a town into a jungle in 10 minutes maximum. Eyes, deep green. Hair, greenish hazel. Origin. Dr. Karen Majors was a chemist who tried to increase her beauty by making a special chemical, testing it on a dead flower, and later testing it on herself. Though it worked normally on the flower, it caused Karen to develop strong pheromones, the power to control plants, a strong bloodlust, and other powers. After finding it to be permanent, 
Karen went berserk around Times Square until being stopped by the heroic Madame Shear. Being given the name Natra by the public, Karen learned to control her emotions and soon became a known member of the Plant Protectors, where she fell in love with her partner, Flora. Costume She wears a green latex suit with a plant design. Teams, solitary, with the Plant Protectors and others. Original inspiration, DC's Poison Ivy. This last thing I'll introduce is a creature, a biological hybrid, to be exact. And if you guys bear with me, I'll try to input it for you. Octoconda. Real name, inapplicable. Length, 550 feet. Weight, 82,000 tons. Status, villain, in creation of Dr. Screen. Face, mobile. Intelligence, three brains. Behavior. Savage and relentless, it always enjoys the hunt for blood. Lethality, only when craving or during a fight. Weaknesses, explosions, electricity, and amputations. Powers, its front half is the body of an anaconda, and its back half is the bladed tentacles of an octopus. It also possesses all the powers of both organisms. Eyes, yellowish-green. Air, not. Origin, one time, the maniacal Dr. Scream decided that she would create a new creature that's simply a splicing between an octopus and an anaconda. After a time of scientific progress, Dr. Scream finally finished her ferocious creation. Being named the Octoconda, it was commanded by Scream to go out and kill the heroic Kydericus. Unfortunately, Kaijericus was able to slay the monstrosity and save in the city of Osaka in the process. Outraged of this, Dr. Scream chose to resurrect the Octoconda and release it out onto the world, feeling that it would succeed through spliced instincts. Costume, none. Team, solitary, for Dr. Scream and other creatures. Words inspiration, anacondas and octopi. Well, those are the three things. Second mention, I apologize for the confusion with the previous attempt for this video. And for all those in the United Kingdom who have seen this to the 11 views mark, thank you. It would be a really great praise to help on behalf of my creations, because imagine countless species from infinite realities relying on you to make sure that you make them exist at all. And I'm trying to do them that favor and such. So if, if you guys like the podcast, thank you for going with me for the, this long. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. Hope you guys have a fine um, school year for some of you. And until next time, in Transmissions.